everyone. Welcome back to my channel. And this is part 14, where we are going to understand how we can integrate the PostgreSQL structured data in our red powered AI application. So far, we have already seen how to integrate PDF, URL, and SQLite database. So if you want, if you are interested to watch them, you can find the link for those parts in the description below. I would highly recommend you to watch my part 13 because in part 13, I just loaded the data to the Postgres SQL and that data is very, very real time based data because I just created a 733 questions related to the system design concept. And let me quickly walk you through with that code base, right? If you just see on my screen, we have 733 records. And if I just extracted five records, this is the structure. We have ID, question, and answer. And these are the questions which we have, which are related to the system system design concept, like how latency and bad user experience, what are some common methods to optimize throughput in the distributed system, right? So these are the questions and the answer which we have. So we have understood how we can load that data in the previous part. So in today's part, what we're gonna do, we are going to integrate this data. Basically what data we have in a Postgres SQL, we are going to extract that. You can see the flow in the in the in the in the screen. Like I mean, first we are going to uh, you know we are going to make the connection to the DB, which is a standard way of extracting data. We are going to extract the data, create a chunk, create embedding, and just load into the pine point DB. If you if you want to understand these chunking embedding and vector database concept, you can watch my another tutorial series where I just cover these topics in very detail. Even if in this tutorial also I try to just cover all these. Things. Then uh, the rest of the logic looks same. I mean, we extract the document with the vector similarity score, rerun with the re-rank model to have more accuracy, and then the flow looks pretty much same. Like, okay, whenever any query comes in, you know, context is going to be created with the vector similarity score uh, resulted document, which actually undergoes to the re-rank model to provide us a more accurate context. And eventually then we make a request to the LLM through which we just get the precise answer. Right, so let's quickly get into the demo part. What we're gonna see is first we have to implement the backend part, and before doing a backend part, we need to see what kind of library we're gonna use. Since it's a Postgres database, so we are going to use a library PSY called G2 binary. So installing that is very straightforward. Pip install and the name of the library. You can come here and you can just do this. Since I have already installed it, that's the reason it's still requirement satisfied. You know, and then what you need to do is we have to build a backend. So what I have done is whatever the code we have written in our previous part, I just created this rag app underscore postgres underscore db url pdf. You can just do whatever you want, and you can just copy this entire code base here. Now the very first thing, once we have a library uh, uh, installed, then we have to import. So these are the two import statements which we need. The first one is going to give us the ability to just create the connection to the post case. And then we are going to using this SQL class from the same uh, module where we are going to just make our query parameters, right? So these are the two important have Then this is a very standard uh, function which I have written, you know, through which we can, uh, you know, uh, extract the data, create a chunk, create a embedding and just load to the vector DB. This is a pretty much same flow what we have for PDF, URL, you know, and the so like database, the only difference here is we are just extracting the data by making a first connection to the Postgres DB. And for that, what we are using, we are using a PS by top G2. There is a class connect and these are the parameter which we need to pass. We have to pass host, or database, user and password. So once we pass these five things, then we are going to get the connection. Once we have a connection, we can create the cursor and through cursor, we can execute the query, right? So what query we are running here? We are running this query which says, okay, select ID question and answer from the table name where we are just limiting to 100 because you know we have 733 records. And this is how we are going to pass the table name because this function accept not only host for database user and password, but it also accept table name, right? So this is what, this is how we're gonna create our query, right? So once we extract, execute the cursor, then we just get all the rows by just extracting fetch all. And this is just exception cases where we are just trying to handle some exceptional scenarios which can happen when we run this. But we are not going to get this because we know we have loaded the data correctly. But in real time, that may, this may happen. Right, once we have this rows, now this is where we are just trying to make the content which through which we are going to make the chunk. So what we are doing, we are just creating a JSON file by saying, okay, we have two tags, Q and A, which is question and answer. And we are just making a, a question. So we are just iterating through all the rows which we have fetched. And then we are just stringifying the question and answer and just creating a 
JSON folder. And then we are doing same thing with the metadata, which is a standard thing for doing for the Pinecone theme. So if you really want to understand the concept of content and metadata, you can understand, you can just watch my vector, vector DB tutorial series and you can find the link on the right part. And you can also get the link for in the description. This is how you can create a docs. So in document, this is a Langchain, uh, you know, class, Langchain provide this class where we have to pass in the page content and the metadata in the JSON format, which we have created for each and every and we are feeding in and creating a list of our documents. Once we have this docs, then through this recursive character text splitter, which we have been using, we are just creating a chunk based on the chunk size and the chunk overlap, which we have defined in our concept. So we have chunk size 300 and chunk overlap 50, right? Once we have that splitter, we are just splitting a document and getting a chunk based on this value. Once we have chunk created, then we are actually going to just add that to the uh, our pine cone DD, right? But before that, what we are doing here is we are generating a document summary and we are generating the questions as well. Okay, so once we have this chunk, we are just using this embed and index. You know, if you just see, it's a very straightforward function where we have this, uh, we just get the embedding object. And once we have our embedding object, what we are doing here is making a connection to the uh, our Pinecone index. And then we are feeding in this chunk, providing our index name and the embedding, which embedding we want to use. And this is very standard for the standard which we have been following so far. Okay, so this is how we are going to just upload the data. Right. So this is the backend implementation. The next is the up, the front end implementation. And front end implementation, uh, let me just quickly post, copy and paste this part, and then we can just quickly go through with each and every line of code. So here it's again a new tab I am adding for Postgres ingestion. Uh, then the markdown we can see. Now we have you know multiple uh, text box first for the host port database name, username, and the password, and the table name. These are the six text blocks which we need because we are going to execute this function which requires six parameters. And we know the concept of in radio, whatever number of uh, parameter we need to feed in, we have to pass that through our radio on UI logic. So that's the reason we have this six, uh, you know, input boxes. Then we have three standard output, which we have been using for every, uh, you know, every uh, data source. We have a status output, like how many chunks is uploaded, then the summary and the by best suggested question based on the data we feed. So this is what we are doing. And then we just create a click handler here and calling the, uh, executing the function with the input and the output fields. So this is what you have to do from the coding standpoint. And then we can just come here and we can just try to run this code and see if I haven't made any mistake, then we should be able to see. Okay, so this, okay, that looks good. Okay, so in the meantime, you can quickly go through the Postgres data as well. So we have this record, five records, and we have total 733 records. And if you're really interested, I mean, how you can just understand how to upload the, just set up your Postgres database, you can watch my part. Okay, so now this is what we have for PDF, URL, SQL, and now we get another tab, which is for Postgres SQL. Here you have to give the local host because I'm running, you know, Postgres with, Docker container, I can quickly show you how I'm running that. This is the command through which I'm running that. So once you just watch my previous video, you will understand, you know, this command through which our Postgres is running, right? So our Postgres server is running on localhost with uh, 5432 port, okay? Database name is right in this code app. You can just copy here. And then the password is straightforward, which is back our password. Since it's local, I can quickly scrap that once the video is done. Let's okay. So what it's going to do, it's going to first make the connection to the Postgres, run the query, which is extracting a hundred records at a time. And I just choose a hundred so that we can just quickly wrap this video because otherwise it is going to take some time. So now it's trying to make the connection. Okay. So I should have add some more print statement so that we can see how things in action. Okay. Uh, Postgres connection established, attempt to fetch the records, retrieve 100 records from Postgres database, that looks good. For those 100 records, we got 171 chunks for indexing, okay, embedding pine code, client is initialized, namespace, earlier namespace cleaned up, we got 171 chunks, okay, in the pine code, now we are initializing the LLM because we first have to create the summary, okay. Somebody's created, now it is going to again uh, make a call to the LLM through the line chain. 
And here it is trying to just suggest the five best questions through which we can understand. So now it seems like we should have something here. Okay. So we can see the processing status successfully indexed 171 chunks in a fine form. And that looks good. This is the generated summary, which is awesome. And then these are the five questions which we have, right? So now what we can do, we can choose any question, whatever we want, right? So let me just ask this question. What are the main challenges when migrating to a serverless architecture? We can come here, ask the questions, upload this. We can ask this question on let's see. Come back to the server and see what's going on. Retrieving configure to fetch up 10 results. Okay, first it extends the 10 result. What makes the vector similarity? Then it feeds to the re-rank model. And then it's get the final three more accurate context through which you know our query or our question will be contextualized. And then it is making a connection to the uh, LLM. Okay, so this is the three contexts in which you know. Let's start like what are the main challenges in migrating server the architecture? This looks good. What are the potential drawbacks? So this is also pretty much same like the main challenges and the drawbacks. And this is the answer. Challenges include managing the state. Serverless function are typically stateless, cold start, initial latency for infrequent function, monitoring and even complex system workflow, when the login, potential cross and predictability for the variable model. And this is how, based on whatever the data you have massaged or transformed, you can make this database or the data which we have loaded to the post is more informative, more easy to understand. And then you can have a precise answer based on the what data you have captured. And you can just keep this data up to date and you can keep it enhanced as you just get more knowledge about these questions and the answer. So this is how you can just integrate the Postgres structured data as well. So that's it from my side for this video. If you have any feedback or suggestion, please feel free to put that in the comment section and I would love to incorporate that in my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching this and as always, stay healthy and keep learning a new thing. And if you haven't subscribed for my channel, I would ask you to please subscribe for my channel as well. And if you feel this video can help your friends, groups and groups, please feel free to share with them as well. Thanks again.